welcome back. So, we are talking of uh, satellite navigation and how to estimate the position velocity and time and we started with position estimation. In that we have seen that it is coming as a quadratic equation. So, that ambiguities can be removed by a simple technique of linearization where you have to have a approximate guess of your position and then iterate and try to find out your position. Now, like that you find out the position and uh, with the uh, iteration value and it can be seen that it has been seen already that even if your initial guess is slightly away within 2 3 iteration you reach to the uh, to your uh, required position with sufficient accuracy with required accuracy. Now, time estimation time requires uh, uh, defined reference time and the elapsed time from the reference instant. Mm. Now, the time is maintained uh, by navigation system is that is a reference time satellite keeps the time. The time required for the signal transmitted at any reference instant to reach the user is also estimated that propagation part. So, once these two are added then you get the time instant when the signal reaches at at the user as per the satellite clock. Okay. So, the reference time is uh, coordinated time that is UTC or GPS T GPS time also maintained that is maintained on the ground and ground segment keeps track of the atomic clock standard uh, that uh, atomic clock movement that small del T. So, that error and it calculates the difference and upload the satellite in the, in the form of coefficients of a polynomial. So, that uh, instead of correcting the, uh, the clock on the satellite using additional circuitry it simply sends a polynomial or the correction parameter. Uh, so, which will be broadcasted to the user. Uh, user obtains the difference between its own clock and the satellite transmitted time and can correct the clock to the satellite time and also it ob obtains the bias between satellite and the reference time which was modeled and uploaded and adds the same to get the reference time that is how user gets the time. Velocity estimation is much simpler that is uh, the shooter range rate can be found out from the Doppler and the Doppler shift is should range divided by the wavelength and the should range rate of the ith satellite can be expre uh, can be found out uh, in, in that form and uh, uh, that uh, derivative form of our earlier quadratic equation. So, in terms of range rates uh, of satellite and user positions and time it can be found out this can be solved using a set of four equations similar way at the position determination that we did. So, therefore, the satellite navigation receiver needs to solve 8 unknowns x y z del t for the position and derivatives of these 4 hmm, for velocity. So, pairs of measurement parameters uh, measurements the parameters and its derivatives from at least 4 satellites are needed. So, these measurements are called observables. So, basic assumptions of this PVT estimation let us recollect that is satellite position must be known with sufficient accuracy. If that is in error your position is in error because you start with the reference the reference is the satellite. At the time at which the signal are transmitted from the satellite must be known with sufficient accuracy. If that is in error you are also in error because you are finding the range with respect to the time and the propagation uh, time and there are other significant sources of error which needs to be considered we will see what are those different errors. Now, let us uh, go to the signal what is transmitted from the satellite that is a GNSS that is global navigation satellite system signal that consists of uh, carrier power, the navigational data, the ranging code, the carrier frequency and phase and uh, it can be mathematically expressed as let us say y i t i i th uh, satellite i th uh, satellite signal is uh, root 2 c i that is the amplitude the d i t i stands for the i th satellite d t a c t and cos 2 pi f t plus phi where that uh, root, uh, root 2 c i is the carrier power component. The navigation data component is d i t navigation data which is being broadcast hmm, which contains the satellite ephemeris and other models and other, other polynomials etcetera. The code is the ranging code c i t and that ranging code consists of a PRN code unique for a satellite. So, satellites are identified by the PRN code instead of satellite number uh, that provides the timing and the spreading the spectrum spreading. So, all satellites use the CDMA mode of communication mostly uh, that is GLONASS uh, had FDMA, but they are changing over to CDMA. So, most of the uh, almost all 
the satellite navigation system are using CDMA most mode of communication. So, this is that ranging code which uses both the purpose of uh, overlapping uh, over the same bandwidth as well as unique identification of the particular satellite as well as time mark. And then the carrier frequency is f i and the phase is phi i. Now, ranging code should have good autocorrelation property obviously, we know an autocorrelation property r t r tau is expressed s i and s i minus tau is expressed like this and ideally the autocorrelation peak is known to you peak should be uh, peak value should be at uh, 0 delay and 0 value at elsewhere and it should have uh, a low cross correlation property because all other satellites are transmitting at a different PRN codes. So, to allow all satellites to transmit at the same frequency band uh, the ranging codes should have low cross correlation property uh, that is uh, S m i or S n i minus tau if you sum them it should be 0 ideally. So, S m is the m th satellite S n is the n th satellite where m is not equal to it is not the same satellite that is uh, this is uh, a, 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 a uh, format in which the navigation message is transmitted it comes very slowly you just see uh, the 300 uh, bits of information at 50 bits per second it takes 6 second to come the complete message of 300 bits and it is divided into many subframes. So, each of the subframe TLM is telemetry HOW is handover word then GPS weak number when first GPS was transmit uh, uh, launched and service started from that weeks are counted. So, how many weeks have elapsed then satellite vehicle accuracy its health the clock correction terms then the subframe 2 and 3 contains the ephemerides parameters of the satellites and then subframe 4 contains the health data of satellite uh, extra satellites uh, vehicles uh, which are uh, this is GPS actually. Uh, so, they have 24 satellites this 25 to 30 sa 32 satellites what are their health position special any other message uh, anospheric and UTC data certain models also sent. So, like that many other additional information are broadcast, but most important thing are these two subframe 2 and subframe 3 where the ephemeris are transmitted. So, as we have seen that it is to be extracted separately and used. Now, at the receiver the analog signal is delayed and Doppler is added satellite is moving uh, the user also might be moving. So, Doppler is added to it. So, it is the same equation from the all the satellites i equal to 1 to L that root over 2 C i that is d i t minus tau C i t minus tau. So, this tau is the delay whereas, uh, reference uh, f r f the uh, frequency with on which it is transmitted it is do Doppler delayed uh, by f d that i th 1. So, uh, and then phi i. So, that is the tau is code delay and this is the Doppler delay. So, the receiver has to search not only for the code to identify which satellite it is, it has to also search from the Doppler. So, it has a search space. So, in that search space it has frequency beams as well as it has time beams. Uh, so, digitized information which is available where the energy is maximum let us say here this is the y it goes on searching goes on searching in frequency domain and time domain and finds out this beam. So, it is a acquisition process is involved and once it is acquired it takes some time to acquire uh, time to first acquire and after that it has to track that. So, it because of Doppler it might be moving the position might be moving code delays are also changing. So, therefore, it is acquisition and tracking both the functions are required at the resource it needs a signal processing. So, signal quality the demodulator should have adequate SNR and SIR will do a quick calculation uh, try to see what is the quality of the signal um, for required this is calculation is obviously known to you the methods are known. Uh, let us say CNR is estimated at the receiver input and uh, noise power primarily depends on the input noise through the antenna as well as uh, the uh, that is uh, the noise figure of the receiver and the bandwidth which is our KTB that is noise power and uh, let us say uh, T is 273 degree K 2 megahertz is the bandwidth. Uh, so, K is known. So, noise power is minus 141.2 dBW or 7.59 7 to the minus 15 watt and uh, the each signal is of the order of 10 to the minus 16 watt which is received at the at the receiver from the satellite. So, then 9 of the satellites assuming all of them are interfering with the same power 
So, 9 times of this which is minus 150.5 dBW. So, noise plus interference CDMA is acting as interference so, noise plus interference in the uh, in numerical terms it those these values can be added and you can get 8.5 into 10 to the minus 15 watt which is minus 140.7 dBW and your signal is minus 160 dBW that is 10 to the power minus 16. So, C by n i is minus 160 minus minus 140.7 which is minus 19.3 dB which is very low the C by n i is lower the C D M A helps you. So, uh, which is uh, of course, uh, now the bandwidth is 2 megahertz which is 63 uh, dB hertz here and subtracted. So, C by n uh, C by n plus i naught is minus 73.3 dB hertz. As so, C D M A gain processing gain has to be 30 dB uh, with the processing gain of 30 dB you get a minus 19.3 plus 30 is 10.7 dB SNR at the correlator output so you can your receiver will work after that. So, that is the CDMA advantage what you are extracting out of it mm, with a 2 megabit spreading you get 30 dB right just a quick calculation. Let us go back to our uh, uh, the receiver receiver block diagram is it has an antenna mostly omni not need not be fully omnidirectional but at least you should look at the sky. So, it is antenna and the RF front end which has the RF amplifiers etcetera and then uh, th after digitization it does the acquisition tracking we told you in the search space and then once it is uh, data is found out it goes into navigation processing it extracts the data tries to do that linearization find out its position velocity and time. Now, sources of error let us see what are the types of error that will come control error which is the ephemeris error uh, space error which is the satellite clock stability and clock code bias and the propagation error is anospheric propagation delay, uh, tropospheric delay, multipath these are all variables and that the user receiver noise and receiver bias also can act. Now, control and space segment error is ephemeris and clock parameters computed at the control segment and updated at certain intervals when it is visible to the control station satellite is visible. So, in between it will slightly drift. So, that is the control error errors in the estimation of the parameter when you estimate that also the, uh, there is a model because of that some error may come. This intermediate positions are predicted using last updated data the errors grow with age for the prediction and their radial error is smallest along and cross track errors are several times uh, larger is etcetera. Now, in the propagation path there is uh, important thing which is ionospheric delay that is ionosphere has different refractive index than free space and electromagnetic wave travels with lesser velocity than free space hence uh, using free space velocity of range for ranging causes error and at this particular frequency normally which is allotted for this uh, uh, satellite navigation which is L band uh, the atmospheric error is quite dominant at much higher frequency it will be much less. And tropospheric delay is a dry and wet components the gases and vapors they also try to delay the signal. So, therefore, there will be certain error. Uh, scintillation is a phenomena which is a large fluctuation of signal strength in short term uh, that is formed by the small scale disturbance in ionospheric that is electrons or in tropospheric region by the gases etcetera. So, that also affects something multipath is a fluctuation of the signal strength due to the reflections uh, incoherent combination of the signals coming from different directions reflections and scattering. User receiver as the signal pass through the hardware from the antenna to the actual processing uh, the receiver it experience some delay and they add up in uh, additional propagation delay and hence the introduce the error in ranging. In addition there is also, also the receivable thermal noise that also has to be considered. So, the true range if we call it capital R now uh, the due to different errors the true range from satellite receiver is not known exactly. So, it is a pseudo range we have already uh, used this term. So, pseudo range is the R plus the clock drift delay uh, clock clock error uh, ino error uh, tropo error and all other errors together. So, uh, now we have understood that there are certain errors and this has to be estimated modeled or corrected how do you do that that is error correction is the wrong solution of the position unless the error terms are removed. The correction error term can be done uh, correction can be done in two ways either by direct estimation estimate and model it and made uh, use of models or uh, real time measurement. Uh, or uh, 
correction can be done with respect to a a reference uh, uh, reference receiver okay, which is called DGPS mm, differential GPS. Now, direct estimation is uh, clock bias can be removed by uh, the modeling of the clock uh, movement and that can come through the navigation message already we have said that. Uh, ionospheric error can be single frequency users can correct ionospheric errors using a model of the ionosphere at that location uh, because ionosphere varies at different places in the world. A dual frequency there are two frequency receivers can be there. So, dual frequency users can calculate the ionospheric error and correct it because both the frequencies will have some uh, uh, similar type of uh, error that is coming in. Uh, tropospheric error can be used uh, with a wet and dry tropospheric model and receiver bias error can be it changes very slowly, but it has to be corrected it can be corrected by uh, estimated uh, a priori offline uh, measurement of the receiver bias and then at certain interval you can correct it. Uh, estimation may be updated at large interval. The effect of error in measurement is uh, ranges are ambiguous with certain width effect on position determination depends on the time uh, depends upon the relative orientation of these error a geometry of the participating satellites. These effects are uh, measured in terms of dilution of precision. It provides the relation between the range error and the position coordinate error. You can see that uh, if the satellites selected for the PFT is located very nearby, hmm, then you can imagine that cross section points for all the spheres will be slightly fuzzy if they are away it will be much sharper that is what is DOP. DOP depends upon the geometry of the participating satellites wider separate satellite lead to low GDOP geometric DOP. GDOP is related to the volume content by the tetrahedron formed by the joining the participating satellite and the user. This is a simpler way of explaining the thing it can be mathematically also done we will not go into the details of that. Now, differential GPS techniques uh, are used uh, to reduce uh, the position error using additional correction data from a reference GPS receiver situated at known position. Previously known uh, estimated well surveyed point is known range error can be estimated at the reference receiver estimated error uh, will be transmitted to the nearby user and these errors are used for correction of the range at the user. The error components may be common to the reference as well as the user. Uh, it can be correlated or it is independent. Let us see. I mean, DGPS does not uh, uh, correct all the errors, that is what is the meaning. There are three types of error components, and cancellation of the range errors leads to the accuracy. Okay. So, how it is done? Uh, there is a reference at this point, which is ground reference in well surveyed point, and there is a GPS receiver, which is receiving from four satellites. Now, if user selects the same four satellites and he is getting the signal. Uh, and user gets some error. Since this reference station knows its own positions well surveyed previously a priori known, so he knows what is the error it is getting from these four satellites in this four propagation path. So, that error term he transmits to the user by another link. So, this correction term comes and the user corrects it, but as we said there are certain common errors between these two reference station as well as the user mobile user there are some correlated terms and there are uncorrelated terms. The common errors are satellite ephemeris error which is completely removed because the same four satellites are selected. Correlated errors are the propagation errors if they are close by then the signals from these satellites to the reference as well as to the mobile user are paths are more or less passing through the same part of the ionosphere troposphere. Hmm. So, they are can be assumed correlated if they are if they are close by if they are further away it cannot be removed. So, it can be therefore, it can be said partially removed cancellation degrades with the distance and uncorrelated error multipaths multipaths will be different to the reference as well as the mobile user which can cannot be removed at all. So, differential GPS is not the full solution always, but it definitely improves. Now, let us talk about global navigation satellite system which is a worldwide uh, PVT determination system by combining all existing resources of the satellite navigation people try to use GPS GLONASS combined receiver uh, Galileo GPS GLONASS combined receiver like that. So, you have more number of satellites. So, you uh, you can select the best satellite uh, looking at the GDOP of 
different types of constellation satellites. So, one or more satellite constellations are used distributed control segment, uh, unified G uh, user receiver and there are augmented system enabled to improve the performance. Now, we will briefly talk about what are uh, some of the uh, some of the parameters and features of the GPS and other constellations. The GPS constellation has 24 satellites in circular orbit, uh, 6 orbital planes at different inclination of 55 degree each and the period of the orbit is 11 hour 50, uh, 58 minutes, semi major axis is 26,500 kilometers it is not geostationary orbit, it is a medium earth orbit. Uh, 4 satellites in one plane uh, unevenly placed not evenly placed this uh, uh, they did it for that GDOP improvement over the uh, service area what they have looked into and eccentricity is mostly circular. So, eccentricity is very low it is 0 0.02 and constellation allows uh, at least 4 satellites visible to a user most of the part of the earth typically 6 to 8 satellites are visible. Uh, another constellation is GLONASS global navigation satellite system which is by USSR now it is search in republic it has also 24 satellites it has 3 orbital planes the phase plane separations are 120 degree and 8 satellites per plane it is also medium earth orbit 25000 kilometer orbital period is 11 hour 15 minutes inclination 64 degree uh, this inclination is uh, selected based on the their service area which is much higher uh, latitude and they are transmitting two frequencies of course now they have changed now th this is uh, FDMA technique they used and uh, ranging codes are uh, this C A code is uh, course acquisition code and P codes is precision code these are also used by GPS I have not mentioned in earlier. So, uh, their frequencies are mentioned and modulation is FDMA, but now they are changing over to CDMA. Uh, the Galileo which is uh, European Space Agency is 27 plus 3 satellites these 3 is extra satellites on orbit spare and 3 orbital plane 120 degree uh, separation of the plane and uh, uh, 10 satellites per plane this is slightly higher orbit 30,000 kilometer based on again uh, their uh, requirement and 14 hours 22 minutes uh, is orbital period inclination is 56 degree and frequencies uh, of uh, 2 different uh, uh, transmissions are given and modulation is CDMA. Now, in addition to that there are compass as well as other satellites India has launched started launching its own satellite which is regional satellite. So, it is called Indian regional navigation satellite system IRNSS you must have seen uh, uh, the announcements and advertisements uh, whenever uh, they come up any, any satellite is launched recently they have completed the constellation uh, that is configuration is a uh, uh, 3 GEOs, GEO satellite you try to recollect it is geostationary satellite. So, their locations are known which is approximately 35 degree east, 84 degree east and 130 degree east. So, uh, it is a regional system. So, therefore, it is not covering whole earth only covering only Indian region, India land mass as well as uh, surrounding ocean uh, I mean uh, nearby ocean area. There are 4 GSO satellites these are geo synchronous satellites. So, they have certain inclination uh, you can imagine that tetrahedron uh, all of the satellites if they are on the same plane you would not get the proper GDOP. So, therefore, there has have to be some satellites which are away from the equatorial plane. So, that is why this inclination is given so, 4 satellites are there with 30 degree inclination at 55 degree east and 111 degree east across the equator uh, that is total 7 satellites and there are master consult uh, center has to be more than one because if one uh, fails the other one takes place uh, takes care and that uh, range integrated monitoring system which is the required for the control segment IRNSS reams are almost um, about 20 numbers uh, I am not sure exact number about it and there are command station more than 5 numbers these uh, data were collected sometimes back. So, it may be may have uh, varied now. Uh, so, we have uh, mostly taken uh, the reference of this uh, linearization technique it is available in many books uh, this year we have referred to, to a book which is understanding GPS uh, by Kaplan. So, with this uh, uh, we have covered uh, what is meant by PVT and uh, uh, what is the trilateration uh, technique using the satellite and the time and velocity how it is estimated in addition to position and then the basic functions of GNSS is very briefly 
you can see it in Pratt also the book uh, textbook satellite communication there also is chapter there also you will get some of the information and uh, errors and uh, mitigation we have talked the GPS and other modeling technique and some existing sat map system. So, with this uh, we complete this uh, satellite navigation uh, which is a, as an application of the satellite uh, communication. So, uh, till now we have covered uh, almost all the topics what we announced that is our initial part is the introduction then the orbit then the space segment the, uh, the link budget then the propagation and then multiple axis then the linearity uh, that is nonlinearity and certain issues uh, like uh, nonlinearity and uh, synchronization issue and uh, then uh, of course uh, the higher layer effect on the higher layer is a couple of issues I briefly touched and of course one of the application but it is a vast subject in this such a short time everything cannot be covered I hope you enjoyed the course thank you very much. <laughs>